Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cubone. My name is Quinton. Uh, we are playing Helldivers 2 today, but before that, I'm not going to be the first person to say that a great many people, including myself, suffered a tremendous loss recently. Yesterday, March 7th, 2024, we all learned that Akira Toriyama, a man responsible for the creation of many incredible worlds, including that of Dragon Ball, passed away on March 1st, six days ago. He'd been suffering from what is known as a, uh, an acute uh, subdermal uh, hematoma. Long words. Uh, it, in other words, it's a form of blood clot that proved to be fatal. But I don't really want to talk about the tragedy that is his passing. Instead, I would like to, ta uh, to take some of your time before we move on and enjoy the rest of our night to talk about Mr. Toriyama's most influential work, Dragon Ball, and its impact on my life. Uh, growing up, I wasn't really allowed to take part in a lot of media, uh, especially foreign media, because of my parents. Uh, this included a lot of anime, aside from Pokemon. Uh, and yet, when my, poke <laughs> when my Pokemon, when my parents would go to sleep, uh, I'd sneak out to the living room and catch Toonami with the volume set super low and the subtitles turned on. Uh, like a hell of a lot of other kids, this was my first introduction to Dragon Ball Z, specifically the Kai version. I picked up in the middle of the Frieza saga, and immediately these characters began to stick in my head. Eventually I got caught, and my mom wouldn't let me sneak out to watch anymore, so I missed out on the ending, and the show faded to the background of my memory. Then, at a sleepover at a friend's house, we stayed up the whole night, mostly playing Halo, and come on, you were all there at one point. And after beating one of the campaigns, my friend pulled out his PS2 and booted up a game a lot of you will have very fond memories of. Budokai 3. It kind of became my obsession. I had to stay at his house a lot during the summer when my parents were working, and we fucking got addicted. <laughs> Some of you won't really be surprised to know that my main was Cell. I was enraptured by the bug's design. The way his moves seemed to pull from multiple different characters. He could use the Kamehameha, the Death Beam, even the Spirit Bomb. Cell was a badass, we need a game to do him justice again, but that's tangential. Because, like any good thing, it came to an end. School started up, we stopped hanging out at each other's houses as often, and the next summer came, my mom wasn't working anymore. When we were together, we were normally playing other games, so once again, Dragon Ball faded to the back of my mind. I still hadn't learned most of the characters' names. But then the big one hit. In 2012, I found a little series on YouTube called Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and I recognized it. It was the same part of Dragon Ball Z I'd seen on Toonami a couple years before. Through TFS and DBZA, I was finally able to finish watching the Frieza saga, albeit not the same one I'd started. But from that point, it was over. I caught up on DBZA and found, a YouTube, uh, found on YouTube a video of Goku and Frieza's entire fight from the original series. It was a long video. <laughs> I watched the whole thing, mesmerized as this character, who quickly was becoming my hero, fought for his life, seemed to overcome insurmountable odds, and then lost his best friend right before his eyes, before using that anger to explode into the legendary Super Saiyan. Uh, it's a moment that will live on in a lot of children's memories, maybe forever. Uh, this isn't in my script, but I, I, I just realized right after the first time I watched, or pardon me, uh, right before the first time I watched that was when my sister passed away. So um, it uh, affected me a little greater than that. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't really over there though. I, I stayed up, or I saved up here and there, uh, whatever money I could. And when I finally had enough in the middle of 2013, I got my mom to take me to GameStop. And I was determined to find Budokai Tenkaichi 3 for the PS2. Unfortunately, they didn't have it in stock because I was a, uh, and because I was a child with severe undi undiagnosed mental issues, I knew I wasn't leaving that store without a Dragon Ball game. The one I settled on, uh, wasn't a Budokai Tenkaichi game. It wasn't even a Raging Blast game. Instead, I saw a game with a weird form of Goku I'd never seen before on the cover. I'd seen Super Saiyan, I knew about Super Saiyan 2, I'd even heard tales of a Super Saiyan 3, but this 
was a form with red hair. So naturally, I went with that, and for more than a year, I was obsessed with Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. A lot of people at this point know that that is not that great of a game, uh, but I didn't care. This was the first time I was properly experiencing the Dragon Ball story. There were so many characters I didn't know about, and at the end, two new characters, Beerus and Whis, alongside a new form for Goku named Super Saiyan God. By the time I started finally growing tired of the game, I was, uh, or pardon me, a new experience had been announced, and let's be honest, I was hooked at this point. So when Dragon Ball Xenoverse released for the Xbox 360, I was right there to pick it up. I genuinely think that was the first game I'd put more than 200 hours in besides Fallout 3. I had my say in Deknaz, I wasn't great with names, and a crew of other characters with more appropriate names for the Dragon Ball universe. That game taught me I didn't really know the Dragon Ball story all that well, after all. So I not only rewatched and caught up on the abridged show, but I finally sat down and watched the entirety of Dragon Ball Z Kai. Uh, the final chapters wasn't out yet, but I watched the original Boo Saga. I even got around to watching the sequel, Dragon Ball GT, and though it took me a few tries to get used to the different tone, eventually the original Dragon Ball, which is now my favorite of the four main shows. Um, from there, I'd start writing and drawing because Dragon Ball was becoming my inspiration. I wrote Xenoverse fanfiction, I wrote what ifs, mostly about Vegeta, they were bad. I talked about power scaling, I loved to draw most of the characters, especially Piccolo, who Akira Toriyama had said was also his favorite, and was mine at the time. And talking about Dragon Ball games got some of my friends to introduce me to some other animes, and it just reinforced the whole trend. Obviously, I kept going. A new Xenoverse, uh, a new Xenoverse 2, two new mobile games, the discovery of Dragon Ball Heroes, and of course, Dragon Ball Super. By the time Dragon Ball Super was over, I was out of high school and trying to turn the passion for writing that Dragon Ball had really kickstarted into something useful. And it wasn't until 2021 that I finally figured out where that use was. For three years now, I've been intermittently writing video essays and practicing my skills for storytelling, and this year I have a handful of great videos that I can't wait to share with you. I've grown to have such a love for writing and the stories that we tell. I've learned how important a story can be to someone, not just to the person who wrote it, but to anyone who takes part in it. I've turned into a total cinephile, I've written more words in three years than I did in any English class I've ever taken, and none of that would have come about if I hadn't heard of one man's story. The entire trajectory of my life has been shaped by the media I've consumed, and while Spider-Man and the whole superhero industry has no doubt played a massive role in that, I'd say that beyond even that, Dragon Ball and the genius that was Akira Toriyama played a much bigger role. I know who I am now, something I've never been able to claim in my life, and it is thanks to people like Toriyama. And to people like you, my friends on stream with me today who share a similar passion for stories and anyone who views this, the stories you all tell inspire me to put my own mind out there. I've rambled on for a long time now, and I promise that the rest of the stream won't be like this. So, while my deepest condolences go out to Akira Toriyama's friends and family, I hope that everyone can look at the amazing work he did for each, and every one of us, and take a few moments of intermission to reflect on what he meant to us. For all of you watching, move well, study well, play well, eat well, rest well. That's the Turtle Hermit way. And to my favorite mangaka of all time, Go Toriyama, and teach a dinosaur to ride a ball. We'll be back in a moment with our stream for tonight.